Hi folks, welcome to another episode of Blue and Gold Talk, and I figured I'd continue blabbing. I wasn't going to talk about the Sabres, but I figure maybe we'll talk a little bit about them, talk about um, the way we envision this offseason maybe, how, how we see that maybe coming down, what's going to happen, and uh, where do we go from here, guys? Really, where do we go from here? I know we have Devin Levi in the fold, which is great, it is, but it's not the end-all, be-all of the team. I mean, we do need to understand that uh, we can't hide behind Devin Levi even if he comes in and just is outstanding we we can't do that because that didn't work with the greatest goalie ever in Dominic Hasek we have to pull up our socks I believe guys play a better team defense soon or we're going to waste a lot of years you know and I don't want to do that you know life's short first of all and the second thing is is like these kids careers before you know it these guys are veterans and they're past their prime before we know it guys 10 years is gone, and this team becomes part of our history with no Stanley Cup again. And I don't want to go there. I want, I want the Sabres to get it right eventually and win a Stanley Cup, you know? And uh, I think to do that, we're going to have to start making some pains, taking decisions. We can't just keep guys in the fold because they say they want to be here, you know? I mean, look, we moved Asplin, that was good. We had like half the Sabres fan base thinking this guy's like a superstar. And um, he showed some real good signs about two years ago, though, I will say. You know, he had me looking at him as a potential top six at one point, but he just doesn't have any scoring touch. You know, good defensively, not a bad player, and a good team guy, it seemed like, you know. So I wish these players well when they go, but we have to make some decisions, you know. I've been impressed, guys. I gotta say I've been impressed with Casey Middlestat down this stretch. I have been. During the losing it seems like his effort is really there, but the problem is, guys, he has no close. He has no finish to his game. He doesn't. He makes dumb passes, stupid calculated decisions. Like, you know, he'll try to throw it through three guys to somebody thinking that they're the Edmonton Oilers, you know. And, but his hustle's been good. His effort's been good. His close has been terrible. And uh, he just can't, the guy can't hit a broadside of a barn to score, guys. I, I don't know if he'll ever have a 25 goal season in, in his entire career really <laughs> i don't know when i watch him play i you know and and we're, we we have to really discuss the olafson factor this is another thing you know i think we should move yoki haru i've had enough of him too i've had enough of bryson there's certain guys i've had enough of and people were talking to me uh i remember comparing asking why i i, I like yoki haru because at the beginning of the season he was doing well and he, and he kind of took steps last year, but he's regressed again. And he looks slow out there and he looks lost. And he looks, folks, he almost looks uninterested at times, is how I see it. Uh, Bryson, I've been saying forever, is just, it's just not the right fit in Buffalo. It just isn't. You know, we've got, uh, we got some big guys there now. And uh, we've got to get some grittier guys, some guys, I would say, six foot two and up, get some big guys in there. And uh, we can look at this in the offseason. I think we do got to get a veteran defenseman. Veteran meaning 26 years and uh, 26 between 32 if possible. You know, that age. That's a, that's a nice block of time that we could look at a lot of potential names out there that will be around. And, um, you know, we have to also realize that uh, to do this is going to cost some cap space. We are going to lose cap space. And we have to see also, guys, what's happening with Ryan Johnson. You know, we're going to find out soon enough, right? I was talking to Jim. I said, well, I don't know. It's not looking good. We haven't signed him. He goes, yeah, but isn't his year not over yet? I said, oh, <laughs> I didn't know his year wasn't over yet. I thought it was. Um, I kind of lost track of that whole tournament since Levi's out of it, you know? So, I, I look, I'm, I'm, looking at, um, I'm looking at us getting another blue liner. I think that's really important. Do we get another goalie and do we move on from UPL? You know, because I know he's shown some really good signs in some games this year. He hasn't been all bad, but I think he'd be good as a backup. You know, thing is, Devin Levi, guys, is still very young. You know, uh, to take over the reins as, uh, as number one might be really pushing it for him. Really, also, you know, realistically, because... Um, I, I put it this way, I think he'll be a better goalie than UPL. I have no doubt about that. 
and he'll be doing it very, you know, he could be better right now, like three years younger, you know, like he could. So where, where does it go? Where does it go from here? Who do we look at? Who, who do we, what positions do we look at? Do we look at another forward? Because we're going to have to move on. Guys, I think we got to move on from Gergensen's and Ocposo. You know, and I know Ocposo is a fan favorite, but he's not a fan favorite for me. I, I don't hate on the guy. I just think we're wasting a roster spot that a guy, you know, that a young guy could come up. And, you know, we got young guys we have to bring up and not waste all their entry level years. Matthew Savoy, you know, we have to bring up these guys and get them integrated into the NHL. You know, I don't want to be wasting all the entry level years in the minors and in, in, in where in anywhere in the downline except on the team. I get wasting one year. I think that's going to become the new norm of the NHL, folks, because the Sabres have kind of started that trend, if you want the truth, in the NHL where, you know, players come in and they, they say, you know what, the Sabres signed their players to a contract already and they haven't signed me, you know. And I'm as good as this guy or whatever, you know, and it's going to start a friction. <laughs> it will. So Adams is kind of fearless with the first year of entry level, which is okay. It is. It is. But we've got to, we've got to look at this. We've got to look at goaltending. We've got to look at defense. And we have to look at the forwards because we can't keep bringing the veterans back, I think, at this point. Hannah Strolls is another one, yes or no, you know. These are tough calls because... It's going to rub some people the wrong way, you know, it, and, uh, but I, I just think, honestly, folks, this year, Ocposo looks old and slow. He just does. He looks old and slow. He's, he, he can't keep up. The league, the problem, you know what happened to the league, guys? The worst thing that happened to the NHL, it got civilized. That's what happened to this league. It got civilized. You know, like Bettman's trying to take like hitting out of the game. And for a guy like Huck Poso, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. You know, he's more handy defensively than he is offensively because he's not very fast. So if it, this league's all about speed and finesse now, Huck Poso has to go. He has to go. So we have to look at these. We have to make some hard decisions. We have to move forward. I guess cutting the umbilical cord with some players because Anderson will be gone. We know that. Um, I think Ocposo, there's a good chance he'll be gone. I do. Um, Gergensen's also. Uh, th these are just some guys. Do we move on from some young guys, though? That's the question. Bryson, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's seen his last year here. Um, do we move on from Yoki Haru? Do we move on from Middlestat? You know, do we move on? Because... You got to get that call right because they're young first rounders that might peak later on. So you got to get that right. <laughs> you know, you can't be looking. And in three years from now, Yoki Haru is just dominating in the NHL somewhere. And we're looking back at this thing. Oh boy, we should have hung on to him. So we got to be careful with these decisions also, you know. Now we're stacked on blue liners. We know this. But I think getting a veteran is the key thing in the offseason. A guy that uh, has a bit of mean in him and, and a guy that's very reliable and sound defensively because we have to start addressing the defensive structure of this team this offseason and, and it's going to take some smart pickups and of course um, you know we might have to look at uh, the assistant coaches on this team there's things we have to look at because the way we collapse guys we're collapsing like a team that has no clue what's going on and that for me is just how it feels the sabers look clued out to why they're collapsing they don't have an answer and the thing is i think we've known here for a while a lot of us what's going what's really going on wasn't going to work in the long run we knew most of us anyway that we knew that this team doesn't hit they're not physical at all really they're very very a nonchalant when it comes to hitting their uh their defensive structure needs a lot of work and it needs it needs it needs a lot of attention to detail like granada would say i i mean i get they pay attention to detail with the passing and the offensive game but what about the defensive game it seems like we don't have any and if we don't have any guys it's going to be a long season next year especially if we 
struggle or run into injuries because teams that are very soft teams get injured more often. It just is the way it is. You know, if you, if you, got, if you don't have any tough in you, yeah, for sure teams are going to take liberties on you, you know? So just my thoughts there, guys. I'm, I, a lot of things are rolling on in my head. I haven't written off the season yet. I know we're at the tail end of it, though. We are. And uh, I'm trying to get to maybe where there's 10 games left before I give in. It's just one of those things I do. And uh, we will then discuss um, uh, the, uh, the lottery hunt as the season dwindles down. We'll look and see where we are and talk about that, too, and potential players we're looking at and things like that. So... All right, guys, done. I just uh, wanted to throw another video out there, talk to you guys a little about this because it's, uh, it's a difficult time for all of us right now, I think, the way this season's closing out. It hasn't been fun. It's been humiliating at best, really. I don't think many of us thought they could collapse like this, you know, but uh, it's a good lesson even for us as fans that maybe we're in denial that um, certain areas of the game aren't really that important. I think they're very important that you play all of hockey in a 60 minute span. You don't just play the skating game. You gotta play all of hockey to be a real good team. So leave it there. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care until then.